Well, what's up, everybody? It's Justin at SK Greenhouse, and today I am here with William McCraw. Now, you might remember we was here a couple years ago, but my, my, do we have a treat for y'all because so much have, has changed. There's so much progress that has been made. It doesn't even look like the same property, and I am so excited to kind of walk you through, look at what has changed, look at what you've added because you've probably doubled the size of your garden oh, yes. since last time we at, were here. At least. And, At uh, least. and you've learned a whole lot too. So oh, yeah. we're excited just to walk through and we're starting right here on the side of his house. We have a beautiful arbor trellis right behind us. And um, as you'll notice from last year, that Carolina Jasmine, is that yeah, Carolina yeah, Jasmine? Yep. It's went crazy. Let's just go ahead and start this thing off. Tell us what you did here to hide your AC unit. Well, we didn't like the way it looked. So I took two pallets, nailed them together. I put a bottom underneath each one of these. We put the dirt in, put the plants in, and that was the end of it. It looks like you might've put a little stain on there too. And stained it, last. yep, and stained so, it. So many people ask, what can I do to hide my AC yep, unit? That's the perfect This is a very perfect creative solution way. You for got it. the, let's see, they call these million bells or caliber coa is another yes, name. Yes, Got those planted in yes. here along this walkway. I mean, it works out it works out perfect. Beautiful, different so, dinas planted up above it. My, my. Same. And Alex, as, as we round this corner, check out, I'm looking at this for the first time, folks. So yeah. I'm, I'm experiencing, I haven't walked through, I'm just experiencing it with you. We ain't got a hold of it, didn't we? We got rutabacchia. Yep. We got some calla lilies. We got some allium. We've talked a lot about allium yep. this year. We love it. Yep. Great for pollination. Got your begonias right there under the medallion. And then of course the Rex begonia. Absolutely beautiful. This hummingbird, is it cardinal vine or hummingbird vine? Is I think it's cardinal, hummingbird. Hummingbird vine? Yeah. All right, this came up from a volunteer. So I, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's, <laughs> it's this. already gone through the fence. That is crazy. And it's almost covered up this beautiful Norway spruce yeah, you got here. Yeah, and I don't want that. Uh, yeah, no, we don't want that too much. So <laughs> not on that one. Chop him, might have to uh, humble him a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Yeah, not on that one. So walking through here, th this, these are the money shots to me. I, I just love the Miss Huff Lantana. Yeah. Um, behind it, you planted a Cryptomeria globosa. And then... I couldn't remember the first word. Remember yeah, the globe. Yeah, that's a very good little yeah. evergreen, folks. If you are if you guys are looking for an evergreen that gets maybe three or four feet tall, uh, has a nice, unique, frilly texture, that is Cryptomeria globosa. And low maintenance. And and this, this is probably one of your favorite conifers yes, here. Yes, it is. Because you have, what, how many of these on your property? Five, I think. Five. So this is a, a weeping atlas cedar. Yeah. Cedrus yep. Atlantica pendula. And I noticed you got them in these containers. Yes. What, why, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, uh, it seems to me like they uh, they grow a little bit better. They don't rot as easy in the ground. I agree. They, uh, I've put every one of them that I've got up above the ground and they've done so much better. Well, since I, I've done that. I agree. So so you might be watching, you're probably wondering what the heck is he talking about? We're in Mooresboro, North Carolina, zone 7B in a ton of red clay. Yes. And sometimes these conifers, if you're not amending your soil heavily, it's better to get them up out of the ground, get, get them, them in these boxes. The There's more oxygen to yep. the roots. Yep. And as you can see, they perform beautifully. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's good to know. Uh, this is garden fox, right? Yes. Yep. I don't know what variety it is, but that's beautiful. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm not sure myself. Good. I think the bumblebees yeah. are enjoying it too. Oh, they're loving it. The bees are loving it around here. And I, what I love about the, your style of gardening is you have conifers, you have perennials, you have annuals, you have shrubs, you have deciduous trees. Yep. You have different types of evergreens. You're not afraid to, to mix it up. No, I'm not. You're very well-rounded. Yep. You've been doing this how long, seven years? Eight, about eight years now. Eight years? Yep, about eight years. So, and just just look, folks, look look at all these petunias you've got planted in here. And you got the rutabacchia kind of scattered in there. Yep. You got the marigolds inter, interplanted. And what's this guy here in the back? Is a 
hammer is that thunderhead thunderhead maybe? okay so thunderhead pine this is a japanese black pine right here in the back uh pinus uh thunderhead yeah um and they grow really well in our yes. zone if anybody's looking for a very um unique specimen a type of pine that'll yes, hold up to our very heat good and humidity one. that thing is absolutely yep. and gorgeous I've got, I've got two of them <laughs> two of those in this thing right here <laughs> This is Dobbs Frosted Juniper. Yep. I know what this yep. is because you, you purchased this from us, what, yes. maybe three or four years ago? Uh, at least four. At least and, four. And it's, goodness gracious, it's five feet wide already. Oh, yeah. It's, you got them growing in a yep. container. Yep. Beautiful. And I don't, Alex, I don't want to skip over this. Um, that's got to be one of the best conifers you got. I mean, in my opinion. Yep. That, that is absolutely beautiful. And is that a weeping Norway? Yeah, weeping Norway. Wow. And and I noticed you got it planted yep, up, high, up too. high too. Al, if you'll come here, I want to show folks, you know, a lot of people wonder if you can grow conifers in our zone. This is the trick right here. William has got it planted up out of the ground, kind of mounted that loose soil up around the root ball. Yep. And I think it's happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's doing pretty good. Yeah. Just right through here <laughs> me and William are we're laughing because I, I remember when you got this from the nursery yeah and, and I, I think you said do you, do you think I can grow that around my house yeah. you know is it will this do good well this is a weeping white pine you've got two of them here yes. and I'm not just saying this William it's probably one of the nicest conifers I've ever seen oh really like in person uh, this is Pinus strobus pendula. Um, as you can see, um, it kind of has its own little personality. Yes. It, it might grow up for a little while, it might turn a corner, it might turn this way. Yep. It's got a very irregular shaped pattern. Uh, the needles are nice and soft. Al, if you want to come in here, they're just absolutely beautiful. Got a blue green hue to them. Yep. And I think when you bought these, what were they like? Oh, maybe, this maybe time? four foot tall. Four foot maybe. tall. Maybe. And, Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think they're, again. Yeah. And I think, uh, what were we saying last time about how you plant stuff? Uh, well, we use a lot of compost. Yes. Yeah. If I have a pot that's a uh, two gallon pot, I dig the hole twice the size, twice the de depth. I use horse manure. Yeah. Uh, Do you let put it cure out? Oh, it? yeah, for two years. Okay. I'll, so you're turning we have it, it pile it? up. Pile it up for two years, use that, put it in there, and water it good. Well, I, I, for you listening, I tell people all the time, it, it's what you put into your soil. Right. It's not the plants you're buying. Right. It's how much prep you're putting into right. your soil. And if you want to achieve a garden like Williams, prep your soil, especially and if you're in our zone. Make your holes bigger than what your plant is, because if you don't, you don't give me no room to give grow. Those, give those roots something soft to grow, to grow into, into instead of that yep. hard clay. Hard gray. Absolutely. This over here, Al, um, this is a limelight uh, tree that was grafted on a standard. Yep. And this thing has gotten <laughs> so huge, you can't even tell it's uh, on a standard uh -uh. anymore. No, you can't. It's got to be close to eight feet oh, yeah. somewhere in there maybe yeah. nine feet tall limelight hydrangea and probably that big around if you if you want a hydrangea that can hold up to the heat and humidity and it's drought tolerant uh, limelight is your best bet this is a panicle style hydrangea panicle style hydrangeas have uh, a cone shaped balloon typically those are the ones that can take more sun yes uh, other than like your macrophylla type hydrangeas which is like yes. the mop head style yeah. in the south even though the tag says full sun that style hydrangea you might want to put in the shade yes or part sun yes This looks like maybe a Tamukiyama yes, or a Crimson it is. Queen. Yes, yep. Okay, that's another Acer Palmatum, which is a Japanese maple. Uh, right below it, we've got some Spirea. Yep. And then you've used nicely the lamb's ear to go around yeah. it. I love lamb's ear. It has such a, well, they call it lamb's ear for a reason. It feels like a lamb's ear. But it does. It really it does. Beautiful, soft texture, great in part, part full sun, spreads. And do you have to do a lot to keep it from 
growing in that way? How nope. Do you, so nope. it's just growing naturally. It, it's in that growing holder. naturally. That's awesome. Uh, it's growing naturally. The, uh, about the only thing I'll ever do is I'll I'll cut it off from my rocks on the outside. Inside, I don't even touch it. Wow. It just yep. looks so clean through here. I yep. love this gravel walkway. Yeah. Um, here's another Atlas Cedar. Yep. Again, folks, you can kind of see how he's got it off of the ground. It's planted almost above the ground, and that's gonna be your key if you wanna get conifers to live and thrive in our zone. Again, zone 7B. Yes. I think the Latin for this is uh, Pinus macrophonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think this is a microphone flower. <laughs> William, tell us about this. <laughs> <laughs> a red hot poker red hot poker um i love how you got these splashed in here in this bed and then you got uh is that asters yes okay so yep. you got some asters coming up beside yep. it beautiful absolutely gorgeous and then you got the variegated monkey grass here in front and then this is probably getting past peak on these but yes this yep. achillea uh, is absolutely gorgeous yeah uh, it's getting close some people call this yarrow yeah yarrow and then you got there is i need there's a reason they call them straw flowers <laughs> sure right? is. i mean they have a crispy texture to them i mean it literally feels like straw and I know those hold up really well in full sun around. They do. Here. I just love how you've laid this out. What What was your thought process when designing these beds? Are you, well, are you, is there something you're shooting for? No, not really. Believe it or not, I don't want it like look like it's staged. I want it to look like somebody's almost just turned around and said, Phew, threw stuff out there, and that's the way it looked. Yeah. And that's what I tried. That's what I tried to bring out. Yeah. Well, you. I, I didn't want it. To, you know you, where you, I, had, I can tell like your style is not manicured formal right, right. like you, no you I like didn't want that, that you like that whimsical yeah and, and I do too I think it looks amazing through yep. here I mean nothing wrong with it if somebody likes it but that's not that's not me right you know I got to show them this another <laughs> I'm like tree but where you have these grasses is perfectly placed uh, this is a sedge grass for you guys that don't know uh it's called everillo yeah everillo and uh it has a lime green texture and william has these underplanted this limelight tree and that's the perfect spot because they love a little bit of shade they don't want to quite be in the full sun all day long yeah. especially in our hot yeah. zone but i love how you got them sprinkled through here you got a little border going yep and then you got like some other perennials that love shade uh, back here, like your ferns, uh, you got this beautiful hosta, and I mean, it just looks amazing. All right, now we're about to walk through your front yard. It's a shady section. You've got these big established oak trees on yes. either side. So I, I've, I see a lot of what you've done here. You're getting a lot of shade, so you're using things like Japanese maples. Yes. Um, you've got hostas through here, and this was not here last time no it was not that this is brand new and, and did you build this i built that oh my goodness that is awesome and it's got two fountains coming out of it one for in the front one at the back my william used to be a contractor so he yeah <laughs> yeah he's got some skills <laughs> this is awesome and it just looks so natural as it as, you know i love the sound yeah i love how it complements your plants Makes me want to sit out and go to sleep. I see you've put in some landscape lighting yes. through here. It, it shines it up good at night beautiful. too. And this is a bird, uh, not a bird's nest Stag fern. Horn Staghorn fern. fern. I remember when you got this. Yep. It was in our video two years yep. ago. So I know you've had this over two years yep. now. And yep. Al, if you want to come in and look at this thing, a staghorn fern does have to be, I guess you bring this in in the winter oh, time. Oh, yes. Uh, it's not going to live in our zone, but it makes for a killer hanging basket. You just have to w have a way to winter it over. And uh, that's just, that's absolutely beautiful hanging off that tree there. Yeah. I'm sure you get a lot of people. Oh yeah, about it. It, lots. I love your little sitting area through here. I'm sure you spend a lot of time. Lots of time. Under the shade of your yep. oak tree, especially in the summertime. Yep. Cause it, Even in the winter. It, I, I burn a fire in the winter. There you go. In the fireplace. Let me tell you something, guys. 
We're filming here in July and it, it's been crazy hot. Yes. He's crazy got his hot. plants looking this good and we've had heat indexes over 100 degrees over several 100. days in a row. So you're doing an awesome job getting this <laughs> <laughs> to making things look like this. So back here, that is that a- um, Pinky Winkies. That's a Pinky Winky yes. hydrangea? Yes. Uh, yeah, I actually starting to see it turn a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Pinky Winky hydrangea is gonna probably uh, that'll eventually get maybe six foot tall, yeah, something like that, yeah. in this area. I think that's about as big as I get. Uh, you got a little uh, Cryptomeria black dragon. Um, and then uh, right here, again, because it's shady, he's using a lot of coleus. So we have a few different varieties of coleus. I've seen another variety yep. back here. Yep. Uh, this is cone coleus. Um, it has a, it's a chartreuse green with a burgundy uh, burgundy stripes going out through it and of course this is the time of year uh, when they bloom so it's looking, mm -hmm. looking yep. beautiful over there yeah and... another big huge cone coleus I didn't point that out when we were over here look how massive that is I love coleus for filling out yep. planters yep beautiful job I see more of your handiwork through here because yep. I don't think this was here no, last time no. this has been here a month so this is what we would call a pergola yeah pergola and uh absolutely beautiful i love how you've got like the natural looking post yeah it's, it's not a six by six right you could just buy at home depot you you've used like actual logs, logs. to make the corner yep. post that's beautiful you got some wisteria yep climbing up it and i believe you told me the goal of this was to eventually have it covered a yep. canopy covered. over this so if you guys are building a pergola at home and you want a dense canopy over the top Wisteria, yep, is wisteria. the way to go, yep. and and it's aggressive too. Yep. Well, these these wisteria here, when I got them, they were about this tall, and that was and they've grown that much, and a well, month, yeah, six weeks, say. maybe six weeks. And over here, I see you've maintained um, your spirals. Yes, these are out of uh, emerald green arborvitaes. Yes, and they don't just grow like that. No, do they? they do not. About how many times a year do you have to prune them to maintain that? Two or three. Okay, so two or three times a year, guys, if you like the formal looking, you know, spirals, I really highly suggest emerald greens. Absolutely. Uh, these are trouble free, yeah. no disease, no, no spider mites. Um, to me, they're much better than like a juniper or Alberta spruce, but they will require pruning a yep. few times a yep. year. And then remind me the name, you, you've gave these two plants your own name. <laughs> Jack and Jill. Okay, we got Jack over here, <laughs> which is, these are weeping Norway spruces. Yep. Again, Picea abies pendula. And then you got Jill on this side. And I see that the artist is at work again because he's got, he's got this board for yes. support. And that's just to kind of help shape it until it gets hardened yes. off. Yes. I'm sure you're going to, as these grow, you're going to continue to kind of oh, yes. shape them out through yes. there. And then I didn't, I don't think, Alex, you're gonna come around here. I, we didn't point this out last time, but, and, and these are your front beds, so I think they're beautiful, but again, With, he's got an oak tree here, so it's shaded. This, this wasn't here. Was it not? No. Okay, last so this time. is pretty new. new. So this is less than two years old. Yeah. So you got the oak tree here, it's shaded. That limits your <clears throat> options as far as what you can it's, plant. And I yeah. was talking about the macrophylla hydrangeas yeah. earlier. Yes. The ones that like more shade here in the south. And then you can see he's got them here. And with an acidic soil, they'll turn that bluish purple look. And then I see you've got, um, they look like maybe an helleri or a soft touch, something like that. But you got Japanese hollies here. Yeah. And then you've got, um, looks like kaleidoscope, kaleidoscope abelia yep. on either side. Yep. And then again, you've got the use of that sedge grass and hosta. Very, very good for shade. Love it. Very good shade. Beautiful, William. <laughs> <laughs> I love these lilies too. Look, look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. My goodness. Are these newly planted or yep. they come back? Okay. The but we anticipate those yeah. coming back. Yeah, oh yeah, they'll come back. Right. Yep. And then uh, right here we got a, this is a perennial yes. hibiscus. Yes. Hadn't hibiscus. started opening up no, just yet. No, hadn't opened up yet. Um, another, rose mallow is another term uh, for this, um, but this is a perennial in our zone. When th these got, we got buds on them right now. When these open up. They, there's paper plate Oh size. yeah, oh yeah, paper plate at least. <laughs> they are 
gorgeous Love when they it. open up. And my goodness, my <laughs> goodness. I think I, I told you the name of this tree. Uh, you were asking me, we were trying to research it together because it's a, it's a Japanese um, white pine. White pine, yeah. And uh, it was Pinus parviflora. I don't remember. Remember that big one? Oh, tree? yeah. We'll put it on the screen. Yeah. I just remember the name of this tree Pinus parviflora glauca brevifolia. Boom. <laughs> I have no idea what that name but is. But this is a, this is a short needle, um, a short needle white pine. It's got a blue uh, texture to it. Absolutely stunning. And that one's grown three feet. And, and look at the pine at cones least. on it. Oh, since last time yeah, we were here, at, at least. least. At least since at you've least. been here. We'll have to do a little flashback yeah. of this tree. Uh, off to the side of his house, William's got this little uh, rock border. Yeah. He's made his own little bed here. He's got another weeping Norway spruce uh, kind of as the focal. And then it looks like, is this Veronica yes. around it? Okay. Yes. So this is perennial Veronica. Yes. It's probably um, just got done putting on a big uh, show. Big show. Uh, typically they're blooming in June, but yep. you still got some beautiful yep. blooms on it. And I see the bees going crazy. Around <laughs> oh yeah. Place. Yeah, they've loved it. That's a beautiful year. Pollinate. They've loved it this year. I got to show them this over here, William. <laughs> I love what you did right here. So I'm guessing you're wanting to make a screen right here? Yes. Okay. So up against this fence, William's got uh, Forever Goldie Arborvitae. And is that emerald green? Yes. And so this will grow up and make a beautiful evergreen screen. Uh, Forever Goldie's gonna keep a gold foliage year round. Emerald green's gonna keep an emerald green foliage year round. These should grow up about eight or 10 foot yeah. tall. Yep. They'll fill in and then it'll screen this whole side yard. Uh, I guess where you let your dogs play. Yes, that's our dog, <laughs> dog lot. And then this looks like a juniper on the corner pieces. I got mm. two of them. Beautiful. They were planted the same time. So this one over here is liking it better. Yeah. And this one gets more sun. Yeah. So go figure that. Yeah. <laughs> you just never know. Uh, and is that a ginkgo back here? Yes, ginkgo. Yep. That's a beautiful yep. ginkgo. Love it. And um, ginkgos will turn a beautiful gold in the oh, fall yes. too. Yeah. And then over here against this fence, you've got another beautiful bed with the uh, outline and rock. And I'm imagining this oak tree shades it out a oh, good yes. bit. So oh, you've yes. intermingled many different varieties of hostas. Yes. We got a Japanese maple. Now this was here last time uh, we were here and it looks like it's grown quite a yes, bit. Yes, it was, yeah. Not sure the name of this one either. I don't know. I know it's Japanese that, maple. When we walk out of here, I'll, I'll remember yeah. all of them. But on the spot, it's tough sometimes. Another variety of hosta here. Hostas are blooming uh, in our zone. This is, again, the month of July. They're yeah. really starting to yeah. show out right now. So right over here, we have, um, is this Cheyenne Spirit Coneflower? Yes. Uh, another name for these is Echinacea. Coneflowers are a staple here in the South. Yeah. I mean, they grow up about two foot tall. Each year they're gonna spread and, and continue to bloom all summer yep. into fall. Um, if you leave these blooms, I don't know if you knew this, but if you don't cut them off through the winter, it'll feed your finches. And oh, really? They love, they oh. love to feed on those. Oh. And even no, if you I don't cut them back, they'll still, they'll still return each year. I did not know that. Yeah. Now we're standing out in the very front of William's house, and you've got some... You've got some curb appeal out here. I see what you've done. So when cars are riding by, you got this these beautiful beds out in front of your fence. Got that beautiful Atlas cedar hanging in the background, hanging in the backdrop. And then under these oaks, you've got some hostas interplanted here. You've done much work, I can tell, with the, the stone. Uh, I guess you, you know, this is, this is a gully. So Thousands of them. <laughs> trying to pretend, <laughs> prevent a little bit of yeah, wash there. Yeah, yes. And, I, I know when people are driving by, they, they, I bet they slow down every time. I have a lot of people stop. <laughs> stop and ask, stop. what in the world yep. is going on over here? Yep. Uh, didn't you recently become a master gardener? Um, are you going to be on in, all, in August. Okay, so you've been working on yeah. that. Yep. Again, William had uh, the Arts Council and a bunch of uh, people paid tickets not too long ago. Right. 
uh, to come out here and, and see this yard. He was on a, a, a tour with a few other houses in the area and I think yours is one of the best ones. <laughs> so over well, here, <laughs> this is this, my, again, I keep saying this, but th this probably is the most impressive, one of the most imp impressive conifers I've ever seen. This is a weeping Arizona cypress. Yep. And I think since last time we were here, it's tripled in size. Oh yeah, at least. It, it's at had least. to have tripled in size. At least and tripled. And again, I wanna show people this, cause William, you really go the extra mile. See, he's he's added support here. This tree left on its on its own without the support. A good storm comes by. It could break it. It could break it. And so William's added this support beam to keep on training it out this way. And that's why, that's precisely why it has so much character. Yep, yep. Um, I like that you just kind of let it do its thing. You didn't make it grow straight right. up. It has much more of an interesting yeah. presence. So and much. When you're coming off the road and you're turning up this driveway, that's the first that's thing you see. That's the first you thing see. you see. And, and Arizona cypresses uh, in our zone do wonderful. Yeah. And, and this is a good way to get a weeping dramatic specimen. Yes. That's gonna hold up in our climate. Again, zone seven in the south. So <laughs> it's a little, little tough around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Uh, it looks like you got some milkweed here. Yeah. Uh, this is great for pollinators. Yep. This is a native uh, plant. Beautiful with the canna lilies in the background. Canna lilies are gonna continue to spread. Spread, big um, time. Did, that, did you just plant that from one plant? And it's I spread? think it was two. Two plants? Two plants. Look how many have came up. He planted two plants, folks. And now there's dozens of them. Yep. And these will come up uh, about this time of year. You're starting to see some blooms, but yes. they haven't quite opened up no, yet. No, not quite yet. Got a butterfly, multiple butterfly Mo bushes multiple. through here. Uh, this one looks like Miss Molly. I think it is. Uh, that's a proven winner. Yeah. Butterfly bush. Yes. Um, right here we got uh, Grand Cascade, maybe. Grand Cascade, um, yep. And then two others with the lantana in the background. I love it. <laughs> I got another ginkgo. Beautiful ginkgo right there. Yeah. So what I love about this area, folks, first of all, when we were here last time, it looked, I mean, it looked good, but you've really had some time to get it like developed. Sometimes yeah. perennials, they don't look good their first they year. They sure don't. People think a lot of that, times. you know, a lot of times people think that you're going to plant a perennial and it's going to look like this the yeah. same year. Yeah. Uh, but that, that doesn't turn into that in no, the same year. That's no. how long has that rutabacchia been there? It looks uh, very established. That's the fourth year. Last year it looked good. The first two years it was it, it wasn't much yeah. to it. But after that, that's what it came out. So this is rutabacchia goldstrum. It is a perennial. Uh, it yes. comes back from the root each yes. year and it's coming back fuller and fuller. And again, you've just got your, your annuals, like your marigolds sprinkled in here with, with the perennials. And then you got your conifers. This is a cedar, I know, a deodor cedar. Deodor. And uh, that just looks beautiful. Another it's, texture, another It's color. like in this spot right here. Obviously. Yeah. It, it's doing great. Yeah. And then I see some sunshine ligustrums back there. Yes. I don't know if you can see that, but sunshine ligustrums, a beautiful gold shrub. We talk about it on the channel yeah. all the time. Over here, another big, huge, is I, I'm assuming that's limelight. Yep. Hydrangea. See, and they're just going This crazy. is all new. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was not here. Yeah, that's Little right. Little rock garden. I, and I love the use of rocks. Now, again, it's just, it's adding more texture and color. You got your perennials, your shrubs, your grasses. And then right here, you got one of my favorite conifers. Again, my favorite. This is an umbrella pine. And when when this thing gets a little size on it, and it, right being right here, it's gonna absolutely yeah, stand out. Yeah. It's gonna be a showpiece. Already is. I love umbrella pines. They have very rubbery needles. Yep. I'd say there's no other pine no, like no. it. I don't know of one. And now you got some more rotobacca yeah. going crazy. Yep. Now, are you feeding these flowers? or Not a thing. Is this all looks like this is coming out of the ground? Not a thing. Wow. The only thing we feed them is that horse manure when we Hor plant them. Horse manure when you plant it we and plant them. bam, yep. look at it. Awesome. And then we got, um, I, this is a spreading yew. Yep. Uh, Cephalotaxis. Yep. 
Um, it's getting a little shade here, so that explains why it's doing well. If you need a good shade evergreen, this one, uh, this is a spreading hue, so it's gonna continue to crawl along the ground. Won't get very tall. It's got these beautiful uh, rubbery needles, very soft texture. And then right behind it, <laughs> that's Picea abies acricona. Yep. Now, did you notice any cones on these turning red? Oh yes, yes. Okay, so what, what time of year, do you remember what time of year that starts happening? It's got some cones on it now. Uh, they when they first start, the first of the summer. Okay, okay, so it's the first of the summer they turn red. Gotcha. I couldn't remember if it was I couldn't either, I don't have one of these. I've always wanted one yeah. of those. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I can see you've had to prune on these. Oh yeah. Because I remember last year, oh, that yeah. it just went crazy. Yeah. This is Jazz Hands Lore Petalum. Uh, I've mentioned this one several times on my uh, on my channel, and it is a larger growing lower petal, but yeah. it's not the kind that gets crazy, crazy. But it, if you let it, it probably would get every oh, bit of yeah. six or seven oh, feet. Oh yeah, easily. And then th late in the summer, going into fall, it starts getting these variegated leaves. So if you come in, you can see how the, you're getting a little bit of pink and white variegation on the purple leaf. They are beautiful that time. And then, you, that's a perfect use right there yeah. of a sunshine ligustrum. Yep. Because the contrast between the bright gold ligustrum and the jazz hands lower petalum, you, you know what you're doing. Well, <laughs> we try. We try. Got the fox in the background yep. with the birdhouse. Beautiful, William. This thing, we were talking about this on the way over yeah. here because I, I don't see many of these, yeah. but this is a whip cord cedar that's been grafted on a standard. Yes. So it's turned into basically like a little tree. And I know this has doubled in size since oh, we yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then I love these shrubs right here. This is Banana Peel Elysium. This is a, a shade evergreen. Uh, it keeps a gold foliage year round. It's not the older style Elysium, so it's not gonna get six feet tall. This one will stay very compact oh, in yeah. this little bed yes. here. You yes. got a tight spot, yep. but you've, you've chose shrubs that's gonna complement the spot really well. And again, you got the gold Carrick sedge grasses up front. Chef's kiss. <laughs> We're back in William's backyard. He has another bed uh, that his driveway kind of goes around. And right here, he's got some, some yarrow with a gold, uh, Metasequoia gold rush in the background. We got a big oak tree, a big established oak yes. tree. It's probably sucking the life out of some of these plants. <laughs> Lots of times. But I can see that you've built your soil up so that doesn't happen yes. as much. Yes. Uh, that's the problem with planting around trees. But what William has done, he's added a lot of soil in this bed to kind of get it up off the ground. Yep. So that's why these plants yeah. are here thriving. Uh, you got uh, a sedum in the back. You've splashed some annual coleus back there, the cone coleus, another great shade annual. You've got the calla lilies. And they uh, come back every year. Calla lilies are great. Uh, people don't use them enough, I don't think. Uh, they, they bloom in the spring. But even when they're not blooming, look how beautiful this yeah. is. Uh, they got the speckled leaves and you can just see them right there in the sunlight. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well, this one's actually starting to bloom again. Yeah. So so these blooms yet or haven't bloomed? Yeah, they have. So he's got extra blooms coming yeah. on in July. So yeah. that's awesome. And uh, impatience here. Impatients are another great shade annual. Uh, that's why he's got them in this area here. I believe this is a Mexican petunia? Yes. Uh, or Ruelia yeah. is another name. Yeah. In our zone, these are borderline, but I see you have no problem growing them. Mm -hmm. uh, another great perennial. These are more upright. They're going to spread each year. Yep. My, my, how they've filled in this area. You got the Joseph's coat yep. in the background. And then the Mac Daddy yeah. behind the Joseph's yeah, that's, coat. That's the, that's the main one right there. And again, as you can see, William has added stakes to shape the branches in the directions he wants this tree to go. And you're, you're basically like an artist. Well, I mean, this this we, is an artist at work. We, we try to, because you know, I, I want it to look, I want it to look different, and, you know. And I see uh, you've kind of got those branches like going out. Yeah. You know, if you just left it to itself, this tree would probably get, oh. you know, 
wouldn't be much. Might not have a desirable uh -uh. shape to mm -hmm. it, but you've made it into the shape you want it to make by using these stakes. So and, love the use of that. And them. hopefully, once I gets a little bit stronger, I'll be out again. About yeah, this way. That's right. So you can just keep this thing. So it'll come out here and do. You just have to move the driveway yeah, out, yeah. Of the road, out of the road. So that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> now, is this your favorite tree? Uh, yeah, this is my. This yeah. is the one we talk about all the time. Yeah. Is a weeping bald cypress. Yes. I don't know anybody else around here that has one of these. I don't either. I rarely, rarely get them in at the nursery. Absolutely beautiful. This is a deciduous weeping tree. In the spring, it puts on these beautiful green needles. Does it turn gold in the fall before uh, yeah. it drops mm -hmm. off? So mm -hmm. in the fall, it's going yeah. to turn gold. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's just kind of, you've kind of let it fill in this whole bed, kind of giving it it's, its own space. It has taken over this bed. <laughs> As it should. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'm is, letting it take over. It is beautiful. Yeah, that's by far my favorite one here. I, I almost <laughs> peel myself when I see this tree right here. I love weeping red buds. This one's called Ruby Falls and I know. Folks, there, there you go. This is probably one of the most beautiful trees, uh, deciduous trees especially at that. Uh, but Ruby Falls is a type of red bud that once you kind of train that leader back down, it won't get any taller. Right. Uh, so this is as tall as this tree yep. is ever going to get. Now it will continue to grow, yep. you know, wider, uh, but makes for an absolutely spectacular specimen. There's not many trees you can put in your landscape that's going to give you a purple no. foliage. So no. it, it's it's nice to see some some different use of colors through here. And then up here, I, this is. I planted these at my house. I love them. Yeah. Talk about these all the time. Forever Goldie Arborvitae. Yep. It's a very slow growing uh, Arborvitae that probably only gets five or six yeah, feet tall. I think that's what they do. Three or four feet wide. Yeah. Evergreen foliage. Looks great on the corners here. I use these all the time as corner plantings. Yeah. People want to know, hey, I got a spot, you know, by my steps or on the corner of my house. I want something to get tall, but not too tall. Yeah. I don't want it to go crazy. Yeah. I don't want something destroying my foundation. I'm like, well, forever Goldie's, right, see that's, it. A, that's a good option. I see it. Is this your gardening shed? Yes, my garden shed. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like a little greenhouse almost. Well, it, it, it was at one time, but and you, my heater didn't work right. So I'm using it as my garden shed. I love it. I like the polycarbonate size, yep. A-frame roof. Yep. Again, I can see your contracting skills <laughs> yeah. coming into play. Yes. I'm, I'm bet you made that birdhouse too, I sure you? did. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't surprise me them. at all. Both of them. So right up here is the top of his driveway. Again, he's got his gardening shed back here where he keeps all of his supplies. Yep. Um, you got a woodwork, work, woodworking shop over here. And then through here, did you lay these paving yes, stones? Yes, I sure did. Wow, love it. Um, got a little bit of rock work. I'm sure you did yes. oh, through yes. here. Oh, yes. Uh, I love the use of this wheel right here. And then the containers of Angelonia. Uh, Al, if you want to come in, Angelonia is probably one of the best annuals for sun oh, out yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, it's a continuous bloomer. It's going to bloom all summer. There's different colors right here. We got uh, purple and, and we got a pink color. They also come in white. And then right behind here is a butterfly bush that uh, it's got old blooms going out and then it's also got new blooms coming out. So that's awesome that they continue yeah. to bloom yeah. all summer. And then right through here, it kind of circles around. Is this coming back for you? Oh yes. Okay, this is black and blue salvia. Yeah. Some, a lot of times I think we get too cold for it, but I don't know, maybe because you're right here up against the shed, it's I getting know, protected. I don't know, but it comes comes but, back every time and it's that big <laughs> obviously it's come back yeah. you know because it, it's come back with vengeance yeah. it looks like uh, but black and blue salvia is a beautiful salvia with black and blue blooms and as you can see uh, the pollinators sure love it and appreciate it yep right here we got another emerald green arborvitae here on yep. the corner i love this plant i talk I, I, when we do shrub tours and stuff i always like talk about arborvitae because yeah. They're, they're just heat resistant, bug resistant, yep. uh, mite I, I resistant. I love them, I love them. Uh, dense green foliage. 
uh, emerald green is going to get eight or ten foot tall, yeah. maybe four foot wide. Yeah. So it makes a very, re really good corner planting. And then through here, my goodness, <laughs> got a charcuterie board <laughs> of perennials and annuals. We got a compact crate myrtle right here. Yep. Um, if you want it, this is a, um, I don't know what variety, but I know this is probably one of the semi door for Yes, yes. So when you, when you got, when you talk about crepe myrtles, you've got standard crepe myrtles yep. that get 20, 25 yep. feet. You got semi door, which is probably what this one is. Probably going to get an eight to 10 yeah, foot range. Yeah. And then you have the truly dwarf crepe myrtles, which will stay around three or four yeah. feet. And they start budding this time of year. You can get them in all different types of colors, yeah. reds, purples, pinks. Yeah. And uh, once they start blooming, you've pretty much got blooms till frost. Yeah. So beautiful tree. And then over here, this is a new addition. Yes. Because I remember when you came yep. to the nursery. Just got it. And a, Again, I love to see stuff like this growing in our zone. This is Picea pungens pendula. This is an excellent specimen plant. Uh, it, it's great all on its own. It's got this silvery blue needles that kind of wheat down. They're very pendulous. Uh, this one will probably get 10 to 12 feet in our zone and fill out to about three to four feet wide. And I love the sedge grass in front of it because that blue with the uh, lime green sedge grass that really pops. Yes. Love it. Also right here, what we got is a lime glow juniper. And I, you don't see these a lot, mm -mm. but lime glow is, is not really a ground cover juniper. It's more of like a shrub type yeah. juniper. Very low growing chartreuse yellow foliage. Probably gets about three foot tall. Yeah. I've got a couple of these planted at, at the nursery in front of our sign. And then I love that. Uh, looks like wildberry, uh, purple wildberry cone flowers right beside it. And then you got the junipers kind of going across as a yeah. border. And this pine is interesting. Yes. <laughs> very interesting. To say the least, this is a very interesting pine. Uh, Mr. Foggy. And uh, is this another one planted here? No. Or this is off the same one. Off the same one. Okay. So Mr. Foggy is, or Foggy, yeah. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's Foggy. Okay. Mr. Foggy is a Pinus banksiana, I know that much, and it has a very irregular weeping habit. There's no telling, this will go wherever you tell it oh, to. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, see, William's got it trained to go down, it's coming back up, again, very artistic, and then in the back, we got some crepe myrtles that are blooming. We talked about the semi-dwarf crepe myrtles. This is one right here, it's a pink variety, and it's just, gorgeous yeah all right we've made our way around williams driveway we we're entering his pool area and right here we have a beautiful rose of sharon this is a great focal tree blooms all summer you can see this thing is loaded down with buds and blooms this thing will continue to bloom until oh yeah on in the fall right oh yeah in the fall yeah and then the backdrop is interesting here you've got two scarlet red crepe myrtles again these are the semi-dwarf these should stay around 12 or 15 feet. And then you have the smoke bush in the middle. You don't see a lot of smoke bushes mm -mm. around here, but yep. they do just fine. When they start to plume, they'll have a, a cloud-like yep. bloom. Yep. That's why they call it the smoke, smoke bush. Tree. And then right under it is a Pinus Thunderhead, uh, Japanese black pine. Love these. Again, if you're looking for a specimen, that, a conifer that's gonna do well in zone seven here, with our very heat well. and humidity. Yep. This one's gonna do excellent. Yep. We got some sedum down here below it, uh, just starting to put on some yeah. buds. And then Baptisia. Baptisia is a, is a perennial that loves full sun. Yep. It, this one's kind of turned into a full blown shrub. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never seen one quite this established, but um, beautiful blue blooms in the springtime. This one's fizzled out, but you still got the beautiful green foliage. Uh, to make an excellent little accent. Shrub. Yeah. Hey, William. I got bad news. What? Oh no. Well, William, we're we're sick about this tree. This is one of the most beautiful specimens uh, you had. This is a weeping Alaskan cedar, and what we have right here is an episode of bagworms. So bagworms, especially here in the south, are a big problem for your evergreens, like your cypresses. Um, your arborvitaes, your, even your spruces. You gotta be on the lookout for these. Come on in and you can see the damage they've done. That's what all this browning is. 
if you look real close you can see these guys have hatched out um, out of their you see that one's coming out of the cocoon right there but what what you're looking for with these bagworms is in the fall you'll see sacks and they look like this and if you don't know what you're looking for it kind of looks like a pine cone from a distance and this will sit there all winter and this is the that's the time to be picking these off these need to be pulled off and then burned if you try to spray an insecticide on these it's not going to penetrate the sack um, now if you do wait until they hatch you can spray them but within about a week's time two weeks time they can cause a lot of damage william was telling me just maybe less than a month ago this tree was in great shape beautiful and then just in a in a matter of a week or two these bagworms have hatched and they feed on the foliage and they can cause a lot of damage in no time uh, so what we're, william's going to do tomorrow is clean all these sacks off probably spray it with an insecticide such as a malathon to go ahead and treat what he doesn't get pulled off and then we're hoping to see this tree rebound in the coming years and 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 hopefully it does so well william <laughs> i got you a gift for doing this tour with us oh wow, man uh, this i was at the nursery and i said what does william not have in his yard and i know you're gonna find room for this you ever heard of a beauty berry? Beauty berry, yeah. Okay, this is a new one called Pearl Glam. Uh, it's by Proven Winners, and it's got beautiful like white blooms now, but they turn wow. to pink. Uh, they look more beautiful. like this. Wow, they're beautiful. Uh, but Pearl Glam is a why people like this one. It stays narrow, like three foot wide, but about five foot tall. So if you have a, a smaller space in your garden, like that you need to fit something that don't get crazy wide, yeah. this one grows columnar. So it is deciduous, but it, it, you'll have purple foliage like spring through fall, and then you'll have these blooms all the way until well, fall. Thank you, sir. Yeah, man. Hey, thank you for Gosh, doing the video with that us. That is beautiful, man. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this tour. Uh, William, thank you again so much. Oh, you're quite I know, welcome. I know not just me, but for the for the viewers at home watching this i know it's inspirational to them it kind of gives people an idea of what's possible yeah especially here in the south in zone seven you don't see a lot of landscapes like this and you've pulled it off through your preparation of soil i know you're keeping things watered as yes, well yes and uh and i just love your strategic planning on what you've done well thank so, you so we, thank you very much you're quite welcome we thoroughly enjoy it I really can't believe I did this. I really truly. <laughs> well, I, mean, again, I will say it. We, but uh, you've only been gardening seven years. Yeah. And and you've told me several times seven years ago, you didn't even care anything about a plant. It, it, a, it, a, seven years ago, if you'd have handed me that, you wouldn't have known what to do. With I might have said, "Okay, thank you." You know, <laughs> and he would have probably sat out back and gone to the bad because I wouldn't have put it in the ground. Right. You'll know what to do. With oh it yeah. Now. In fact, I've almost got. A, in my mind of where I'm going to put it already. With that said, become a plant person. Absolutely. Absolutely.